Schools back in session, students are settling in, but many are already dropping out. And nationally, a student drops out of school every 26 seconds. That's 1.2 million a year or 6 26 seconds. That was one of the first things that kind of caught our eye. <laughs> what? You're telling me every 26 seconds a kid drops out of school? It doesn't make sense. Growing up in this city, you know, I've seen kids drop out of school. Single parent household, underprivileged. I grew up with a lot of kids that freedom has been taken away, that's in prison now, that's not around, that's dead. It's almost like when you when you grow up in the inner city, you grow up in the in the projects, no one, no one cares about you. So many kids like myself have dreams. And the only thing to stop those dreams from becoming reality is the support around them. For me to be able to have a platform and use my resources. Obviously, I, I didn't know the ins and outs of how to create a school, but um, I was passionate about having our kids in our hometown living under one roof. I want to be a great one. I want to be a great one. LeBron James Family Foundation is opening a public school for at-risk youth. 240 third and fourth graders with plans to expand over the next four years. Robin, it is a public school. That's huge, a public school. It's not a charter school or private school, it is a public school. We believe that if you're gonna create real change for children in urban districts, that you need to do it through the public school system. LeBron understands what it means to be a public school kid. Look, my issue is there's a fawning media. LeBron can do no wrong. LeBron's the greatest thing in the world. Schools fail. I want to see things play out. You never know when the time is right. You just do it. And let's figure it out. Let's learn together. The mission and the goal of the school is to have these kids feel like they superheroes. Everything is nothing without you. Without you. For young kids, ages seven, eight, nine, ten, kids just want to know if, if we care about them. What's at stake? Their lives. I was very excited. You so over excited. I think I even cried. Like, the James basketball school. player is gonna do right by it. That school is gonna help him and stuff, you know, with his his problem, like with his reading, everything. I love LeBron James. My daughter knowing, and he'd go be out there playing. He was just a little. Who would ever think he was gonna be a star and stuff? He was little like my grandkids. I'm just happy a part of it. I'm glad he in the school. It's a big opportunity. So I tried my best not to be nervous. I think about stuff. I hope I'm ready for school. Our students were selected from the lowest 25th percentile. It was a random selection lottery process, no application, no open enrollment. I was happy that LeBron James picked me in the school. I got so excited, I dropped my phone on the floor. I was doing break dances. We went and we got some ice cream to celebrate. Like, it's like the first day of school, and like, I am super excited. I hope I uh, get like better grades and stuff on like my reading, and maybe to go uh, past the fourth grade test next year. I'm very nervous about that. We're doing something that's uncharted waters. We're bringing all the most at-risk children together. That's hard. 
I started to cry. It's just overwhelming and exciting. Today, the world changes. Enjoy your day. See ya. I'll be here. You'll hear me screaming up and down the hallways. I get loud when the kids get here. Angel! <laughs> My prime bags of makeup. <laughs> We're here. We're here. Good morning, Team IPS. Day. 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 Let's get it. Let's go. Whoa. Whoa. Oh my goodness. When I walked in, I was wowed. Get on I thought this was a store full of shoes. I that All those shoes, those are my favorite part. I was like, <sighs> We knew that if we're ever going to really change graduation rates, this school needed to be different. Here in Akron, a specialty school is what we call this school. We really want to give them the freedom to be innovative, and then we watch to see, does that work? And then we can bring it to the rest of the district. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. When I started as a teacher, I was told you're not allowed to touch kids. You know, you're not allowed to show affection. A hug and a high five and that commitment to supporting that child, that is going to happen here. Um, I'm going to be a police officer, I'm going to be a nurse, and I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to be good being a police officer. Just kind of do my thing. I want to be a scientist and actress. And also, I love Halloween. Wait, the only one that I really like is the doctor. Welcome to your first day of school at the I Promise School. You're going to repeat after us. I need you standing straight up. And I want to hear you loud and proud. I promise. To go to, school, to go to school, to never give up, no matter what, and above all else, to finish school, to finish school. To finish school. <laughs> I almost cried a little bit because um, it's it's just so inspiring how we could just do this school. Clear your desk off. Thank you, Maddie. Yeah. Hey, I want you to say however you feel. Whatever happens in your circle stays in a circle. I really didn't feel that good because my brothers and sisters and my siblings, they would call me stupid because you go to this school and it's for kids that didn't, that was supposed to get held back. She was like, you go there because you can't read and you don't know how to spell all the type of words and stuff. Once I heard about the school, I got really excited because I knew that it was a school for people like me that kind of need... Hmm. I just knew that it was a good school for me. Last year, I was supposed to be in fourth grade. So this year, I was supposed to be fifth. I had bad grades in math and reading. That's why I'm mostly chosen to be here. At my old school, teachers told me that I wouldn't be able to make it. How many of you think you're stupid because you're here? LeBron. I see him and these kids, in a sense. Um, an initial, maybe, lack of hope in their future. <laughs> they going home with a couple. The schools that I used to go to, like, I was bad there. My teacher always said that I was not good. I was terrible. On the first day of school, I was like, I ain't doing this. <laughs> I'm leaving right now, bye. And they made me stay. I couldn't get out of there. So I freaked out, I was lying, literally. 
my tears were like dripping. It was like a pool of water, pool. The reason that we picked at-risk and struggling readers is because LeBron wants students who were just like him. LeBron was that struggling student academically and with attendance. He missed 80, like, something days of school. That's a lot of days. It's, it's not good. his fault. It's not even his mom's fault. We had some things happen in the family where we pretty much was homeless. It got real tough. I didn't have a lot of support. It was difficult, not only for him, but for myself, that he couldn't get the education that we wanted for him and that he deserved. It's so funny, too, looking straight out of his window, seeing North Street, <laughs> the street I grew up. Did you ever drive down there thinking you'd be opening a school here? No. Not only driving, how about go back before driving when I was walking North Street? I, mean, I grew up down that street. As a kid, I remember I was a kid, I used to walk around here and always see McDonald's and couldn't afford it. And I used to be like, wow, my goodness. LeBron saying, you know, I want these kids to have opportunities that I wish I could have had. And understanding that our most intensive students, uh, nine times out of 10, have the most intensive needs at home. I want to keep up with my mom. She's a single parent. She got seven kids, and she need a lot of help. I do home health. I take care of the elderly at their home. And I do that six days a week. I don't never get to see Nathaniel when he come home, because I go back at 4. So I catch him when I get back at 7.30. I do my best. I do, I do. We knew that we couldn't bring those children up to grade level without looking at their family. Hey, what's happening at home? Is it a struggle to get to school? Do you have electric on at your house? If you have a child come to school that maybe didn't have a meal the night before, how in the world are they ever gonna sit and learn? They're starving. Lord Jesus, thank you for this food. Thank you we can all be here tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. I hope we all have a good weekend and do good on our exams this week. Amen. 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 Scout and, and some of our grandchildren would be uh, considered trauma kids. They've been through a lot. I drink Sprite every day if I had to. Holy smokes. In 2013, our youngest daughter passed away. Her name was Tamara. She had five sons. They are now all in our very small house. Food supply is huge for a family of nine. We have social security checks. That's basically the financial support that's coming in. But they opened the food bank at IPS. It's a real blessing. I'll go ahead and service you here because she's sick. Okay, anytime. The resource center here has been unbelievably helpful. There's detergents, all these things that add up, even coffee. Sounds good. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> when we realize we have to address the whole child and part of that child is their family, I think we really could start a revolution in, in um, public school. I really think so. We want to make sure that our parents have all of the barriers removed so that they can focus on supporting their kids. Families are able to come and earn their GED, and we have a longer school day, nine to five, which helps our families with childcare. It's not instant oatmeal that we create in here. You can't just put the oatmeal pack in the bowl, put it in the microwave, a minute later, you're ready to go. We're okay with dealing with the process. The true test of our We Are Family approach will be when our students take the MAP test. MAP stands for Measures of Academic Progress. Our third graders have to pass the MAP test in order for them to move on to fourth grade. Since most of our kids started a year and a half or more below grade level, we have some work to do. They need to make more than one year's growth by March. If you don't pass the test, then you just have to stay in third grade, and then you do it all over again.
That's the last thing that a kid wants to happen to them, is them to get held back. That is, that is a very embarrassing thing, and it can play with your emotions, it can play with your psyche, your confidence, where you feel like you're just not smart enough or you're not capable enough to move on. I worry about going to the fourth grade. It was early on that we noticed a lot of our students acting out or completely isolating themselves. Students like Nate, if things got too hard or frustrating, he would leave the classroom. I got mad and then I walked out of the class. You know, you charming, man. You just fun. You are lots of funny and fun. Am I fun? OK. Yeah, but fun is cool. But we got to take care of our business. Well, every time I go to recess, it's always drunk. So I just stay here. He mentioned that he'd like to be a police officer. Why, mate? Because I think it's cool and I like helping people. Yeah, yeah. We need to get good grades in school. Yeah. And then you can do it because you're very smart. And I repeat, very smart. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do our eye promise sharing. Okay, Preston? Um, I feel like I'm in the dip. Oh, my goodness. Who can explain what the dip is? Maurice. Is it yeah, like when you're in the middle of a challenge. And do we all get in the dip sometimes? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Even adults, right? Yes. Yeah. Let's try to work through it. Say, I wonder how I can get out of this successfully. And think about promising yourself. When you get in the dip, to not get upset at yourself and make your behaviors get angry. OK? The I Promise Circle is the heartbeat of our school. We do it every day after announcements, and we do it after lunch and recess. Okay, let's try this one. We have a song that's played. They make a connection with the song and how they're feeling. Okay, tell us more. Why? Because I miss my mom and my dad. You miss your mom and your dad? And my brother. Your brother. And I haven't seen my mom for almost nine years. The purpose is to get students to understand their emotions. Come in. You did a great job. But also to establish that trust. I think you've been a little bit harmless. Hard on you guys? Yeah. OK, let's talk about that. You build that family bond where the kids are able to freely tell you, Mrs. Wharton, you made me upset today when you talked to me that way. So that gives them power, and it gives them an opportunity to learn and process how they're feeling and what they need. Dominique. It made me feel sad because my little brother died. My little brother, he got shot. So this kind of reminded you of that. Nate, when we were doing Promise Circle, he shared about a time when they had to hide under tables and stuff because SWAT was like raiding the apartment building. It was drugs in my uncle's house. And the SWAT team had went to his house, and they um, and they had um, told everybody to get down on the floor and cut off all your lights. You were there. Was that scary? You weren't scared of the SWAT team. What happened after that? They, and then a whole bunch came, and they went to my uncle's house. And did they do anything with your uncle? They took him to jail. I live on the south side. Neighborhood we live in, it's like a lot of stuff happens, like shooting, killing, fighting. I just, wee, 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 wee. I don't want to hear that all night. This my dad. I love my dad. My dad, he was with his friend, and his friend set him up. They stabbed him, they shot him, ran him over. They stabbed him with a stone. I don't feel safe in the neighborhood. 
Jeez. And like it comes in my dreams and then like think of what happened. Well, I wake up in the middle of the night and like can't go back to sleep. Nathaniel, he got his rough times, but his soul, like he's different, he got a different soul. He don't interact with kids enough, so I think they agitate him. I don't have a lot of friends. Oh, you flunked and all this, and they, they calling me dumb. I'm like, Nathaniel, you're not dumb. Don't ever feel like you're dumb. Neighbor. What's O-R? Or? Neighbor, yeah. And then what's that one? I see that, that the words are big enough. I got to write them down and go home and practice saying them over and over again. Find the base word. That looks like one of our spell. Yeah, what? Nate is reading at about a kindergarten level. I feel like he's missed a lot of his education because of his behavior. Boom! Police, put your hands up! I have dealt with a lot of disruptive behavior, but never where it was so emotional. Missed time in the classroom. That's where his gap is coming from. I can't go in there. Come on, you have to. It's too hard. Okay, okay, I need a vomit. <laughs> So, Deshana, will you highlight the 15 toy cars? Dang, I keep on doing that. You make a lot of mistakes. That's rude. I'm not rude. I say you made a lot of mistakes. No, you said, um, oh, my God, you made too many mistakes. I didn't say, okay. oh, my God, I said you made too many mistakes in life. And I said, it's hey. okay, because I do too. See, that's it's, why I want to go back down. Okay. I'm going to break this. Wait. Come on, y'all. I'm going to break this. Deshana, come here. Deshana, at the beginning of the year, her only goal was to stay in the classroom, and it was for 15-minute periods at a time. What are you staring at me for? Hmm? You're in. All my teachers that I had in kindergarten, first grade, and second grade. I hate them stupid, dumb bastards. Mm. I told teachers that I was going to kill them and mean stuff to them. It's not fair. So, I'm wondering, how many of you have felt like this? Do you feel safe in this small space? Do you feel safe in here? Whoa, come here. What, what's going on? I miss my dad. You miss your dad? Yeah. Where's your dad? We never talked about your dad before. My dad is at Stewart Middle High. Oh, okay. And he can't come back. Deshana had a really rough day because dad had to turn himself in to go um, either to rehab or to jail. I guess so. It's a safe spot for me. It's a safe spot for you? Well, not really, but. What about if we decorated a safe place, something nicely in your room? Like you can decorate pictures and put them on the wall, but going in that locker is a bit extreme. When I saw her in the locker, it was kind of devastating. Because I just pictured my daughter there feeling so scared and unsafe that she had to be confined in a locker. Papa! 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 People get rid of her all the time, is what she said. You'll want to get rid of me because everyone wants to get rid of me. So, the ball used to play right in the court with my dad. And when you step on the grass, that's out of bounds. I live with my papa. But we're going to move because my grandma passed away. Since my wife passed, it's just me and her in this house. What do you stubborn? What does stubborn mean? Not doing what I tell you. You're doing what you want. You don't tell me that. <laughs> I tell you all the time. 
No, tell you don't. hard. Don't I tell you hard headed? Yeah. Well, at the same time. But you don't say stubborn. <laughs> This channel's been through a lot. My daughter see me go to jail. She's nine years old, you know what I mean? I've never kept anything away from Deshana. I actually talk to her as if she's, you know, a dog. Deshana's dealt with a lot of death. My mother got ill and she had Alzheimer's. Deshana, she was a full-time caregiver, helping my mom with the restroom, getting dressed in the morning, it's everything. She's just been through a lot. Good morning. Hey, how are you, Jessica? Oh, I get a hug. Thank you. Good morning. Have a good day. <laughs> I hope he has a good day today. He had a rough day yesterday. Great. I hate this school. I just hate it. Giving the kids a true sense of belonging, that is crucial for our kiddos who felt like misfits other places, who felt like they didn't belong. For them to come to a place where the teachers recognize them, love them, and making space for the baggage they bring with them. You can hear me clap once. You can hear me clap twice. I'm bad at school. I think I don't put effort into it. This was the kid who, on the first day of school, who would not even come in my classroom. We're only eight weeks in, and now we have vents in his own area. That's progress in my eyes because this is a kid who wouldn't come into class. Come here. Uh, I, want you to be sorry. I don't think anybody is expected Vince to learn, and he is below reading level, so he is not on a fourth grade reading level at all. He's on a second grade reading level but that is an intelligent young man. And I think he's had the opportunity to use his intelligence to manipulate others as far as his old school. And I think he's met his match this year. You can pick one up. Just don't hold them for a long time because they gotta stay warm. Yeah, I think I counted six of them in there. They're all... Vincent was born a condition called Klippophile syndrome. Gentle, then. See him? Look at him popping around. I think I got him. I got him. In a cervical spine, C3, 4, and 5 never separated. It just stayed one long bone. <gasps> it took us a long time to get a diagnosis because the syndrome is so very rare. It's about 1 in 500,000. And as he's gotten older, there's been some other, like, behavioral things going on. Yay. Hey, Ben. Say hello over here, man. Like, oh, just... Dad, never mind. Yeah, we've had a lot of problems at home, getting them to follow directions and to listen. Ben, the seat bud, come on. The school that we were at before, it was really, really rough. Vincent, you want rice? Or no rice? Like kind of rice. White rice. He hated school. He hated going. He would pull my hair. He was a runner. <laughs> he would run around the block at school. I had to make sure he didn't take off. This one's my favorite. Part six of Friday the 13th. The teachers just couldn't handle them. You know, you see all the desks all lined up over here, and then I seen a desk sitting way off in the corner. Jason again. I said, Vincent, where's your seat again? at, bud? He's like, oh, it's, that's my seat. You know, because he was such a disturbance, that's where they put him, but he wasn't learning anything. This is real little, I'm just telling you the truth. Sometimes he even scares his teachers. I remember so many times crying. I'm like, something has to change. There's been a lot of incidents here where I've had to restrain kids. And now we're wrestling by a staircase. Is that the safest thing for me to do? Huh? We just need to go sit down and talk. Understanding that that reaction has nothing to do with me personally. 
Stand up and look at me. Stand up and look at me, please. And it's, and it. Stand up and look at me now. Stand up and look at me now. I'm not Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. You know how much this is a tough group of kids to work with. You know, with all that trauma and all of that, it, it wears on you. Relax, baby. Relax. Relax. Why are you upset? You want to sit on the couch? Okay, go ahead. The past two weeks, it's their third flip out. Coming together? Huh? Here, squeeze the towel up. I think him and mom are going through another bout of homelessness. You're upset. All right, breathe for me. Some nights he's in a shelter, other nights hotel. Lay your hand flat for me. No, not yet. Okay. Last time I had to hold him for an hour Thanks and 45 for... minutes before I could get him to in that rage. The scary part is, you know, ramming his head against the wall like that. You know, it's just the self-harm. Can you sit up, sit up like a big man? Straight up. So we're gonna crank out this work, right? All right, go ahead, I'll hold it. You knock it out. I spent right, seven years at a middle time. school where we had a lot of the behaviors and no family support. Can we sharpen it? Any teacher here will tell you that we can look at some of these kids and know where they would end up if they didn't have this opportunity. Now let me ask you this though. Should you should you have been sitting upside down on your chair? No, I got mad. You got mad and you sat upside down in your chair. Is that the right way to react? No. I always say that the growth and the success of the I Promise School is not academic. It's what do these kids look like when we release them eighth grade into their high schools. It's a marathon, not a sprint, is the way that I look at the success of the building. The honeymoon is definitely over. We have to provide more intensive and focused supports because of the trauma that they bring. At my old school, like, I was really scared that, like, people would get mad at me or just, like, judge me. So, like, I was just self-conscious about myself in every way. Scout comes from a really rough background. I had Scout at Resnick, so I followed her through second grade. I was with her all last year. Resnick had nine kids out of their 100 third graders that were at risk. She was an outlier there. There's not a lot of trauma and supports there for her that she has here. Scout has a different way of showing her trauma. She's more reserved and in internalizing. She's always fine. If you ask her, she's fine. I'm good, I'm fine. But she's struggled with her mom's health all of her life. My life I've been waiting for, I've been praying for, for the people to say that when you don't want to fight no more, there'll be no more, and now children will pray. Bah! My mom has epilepsy. <laughs> Did it, first try. <laughs> I'm used to dealing with it. I know what to do when she has a seizure. We pull to her left side and then make sure she doesn't choke or anything. She hit her head. No, it didn't hit my head. It just bruised the brain. Yeah, it hit your head. Because the second brain surgery was strapped it in with the seatbelt, using a ligament in my neck to, to keep my brain in place. So the impact of trauma on learning it's actually scientific. Like, the brain processes information in a certain way, and if you are under extreme stress, it will not process. Every day fighting. I'm used to it now. I just watch now. I've worked in inner city for a couple years, and I had, like, tools, and I had things that I could use as far as interventions go, and these kids didn't respond to what I knew. I can't that I'm like trying so much and I feel like I'm failing as a teacher because of the behaviors in my classroom. One day they just broke me to the point of where I just cried and I had to like walk out for a minute. I don't know, it's just, it's hard, it's challenging. First, you have the romantic thoughts, like, I'm gonna change the world. So when you get in and you have 20 kids who struggle with school and you have some kids who have behavior issues, you kind of be like, okay, well, this is a little harder than I thought. 
I wake up physically feeling like I've been working out because you're tense and you don't even recognize it. Being in this school setting and we're under the spotlight, there is extra pressure. You know, I know the teachers feel it. I like how you came over here and you see Everybody's watching us. Ooh, how's the I Promise school gonna do? I would be lying if I didn't say to you, <laughs> there were days when I'm going, are we going to be able to do this? I feel like my whole boat is being rocked. It's like it took a, a long time to feel like I was even doing the right thing. I know that, like, that I've made improvements, but sometimes it's tough for me to like, realize I have because it's just like some days are great and then some days are like oh my god like what just happened in my room I I don't know I'm, I'm kind of stuck I feel like I, I'm not really connecting to too many people and I don't know if it's because I'm working with multiple grade levels and my time is split but it's just been hard I'm struggling like I left a building where I was on an island and then I come to a building where I'm still kind of on an island and I'm kind of okay with being alone, but I don't want to be okay with being alone because I think we can do more if we are a family. Just take some time to, you know, talk to people because we hit the ground running, I mean, and we had to put so much into the kids so fast. Just sitting here listening, I feel that I failed you as a leader. So I promise that I will do a better job helping to hold us together. When school started, you know, we all became focused on the kids and we lost sight of each other because we are creating change. It's not going to be comfortable. It is going to keep you up at night because if it doesn't, then why are you here? The biggest thing that we have here is this We Are Family philosophy. And LJ, everyone that's sitting around you has given so much more of themselves for our kids. He wanted to address you because yeah. none of you can leave us ever. <laughs> I woke up this morning, my alarm went off at 8 o'clock, and all I was thinking about was getting down here. Like, Michelle, know me game day? I don't, do, I don't mess around. <laughs> I had to be here today because this is more important than anything. We're a team. And, you know, two months in, we finally started to get it rolling. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I was to myself at one point in time, like a couple weeks ago, I was like, I'm about to break. I'm about to break because I preach excellence so much every single day. And sometimes you want things to happen right away. And then you have to realize it's a process. <laughs> 10 years from now, you know, a kid come up to us and say, I'm in my sophomore year of college because of you guys. You know, I'm about to graduate high school. You know, I'm going to law school. And I'm about to be a nurse or a doctor. Or it starts with us. Like, it starts with every last single one of y'all. And thank you. You guys are, you guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So a lot of our kids that started here came hating reading. Um, Scout is a perfect example. Her grandma would tell me all the time how much she hates to read. She would not read with anybody but her mom. Only she was a struggle to get her to even do that. Scout, let's just try it. Yes. You have to show me what page we're on anyway. You know, she'd read a little bit, but then as she'd struggle with one word, it would just close the book, throw it down, and done. She's very shy reading in front of people. Nobody's gonna judge you. Let me see, let's check on, go back. This week What's is that? the student's first chance Good. to pass the test. They will get another chance to take it in the spring. Uh, 
The third grade reading assessment is going to be very difficult because many of our kids are at the first and second grade reading level. And we are working to finish number three. Whether we admit it or not, the kids get a lot of test anxiety, which is very sad that kids who are nine, 10 years old are absolutely consumed with what happens if I don't pass the test. Sometimes I'd be nervous because I'm scared that I won't pass it. There's a lot of questions that are going to be hard and challenging for me. When people don't pass it, they go to the summer, they go to a summer school. I hope I don't have to do that. These kids, they know they struggle and they've been told that. So this year, what we're trying to do is, you got this. Mom wrote you a letter about doing your best. Focus hard on your test. Don't rush. Repeat. Oh, then you, can you read no, that you part? No, you read that part. Oh, I don't want to. It says, I love you, Mom. Good morning, students. Today, we are going to start administering the fall mm. test. It's very important that you try and do your very best. I want you to take your time and I want you to think about your goals. I am confident that you can do it and that you will put your all into it. Anyone else have any fears, any worries? I'm not a believer in the test being an indicator of learning. I think that's too much pressure for an eight year old, but that's what we're required to do by the state. Here goes my timer, voice level zero. I didn't say go yet, wait for the clock. I tried to keep them relaxed. So I just told them what their goal is and we worked our butts off to meet it. When I read, I feel frustrated. This is a lot of stupid questions. IPS scholars, your time is up. Testing is over. Out of 223, we have 11 students expected to pass 11 three third graders and the rest fourth grade. Look at that. So you see the need for change. I don't want to say it was a reality check, but it was shocking to see how much help our kids need. This is a 911 emergency. We need to adjust on the fly, and that's what we're doing. Our students are struggling tremendously in reading. So we're doing a total overhaul of our teaching and learning. Can you read it again? We're spending more time in our small groups. You don't have to stay. Teachers can then focus on one, maybe two reading levels and provide an individualized approach. Use that one. All right, Deshaun, I'm gonna read next. Push, push, push on it and come on out. What said Wilbert said? What was baffling about Deshauna is that she is reading above grade level. She's one of the brightest kids in this building with the greatest potential. Uh, She's actually on track to pass that test in March. The, was standing in the long grass. She spent a lot of her time in second grade outside of the hallway having those fits. So imagine what she could have done if she was in a classroom all second grade as well. I think Deshana sometimes needs to feel like she's the adult and in control because of different things that she has faced. Why I'm so angry is because I got problems. All because of Chloe. She want to say stuff under her breath, and I tell her to say it out loud because she's not going to say it to my face, and she never do, but I be saying stuff to her face when she say, say it to my face, so I say it to her face. Take a deep breath. You got this. At the end of the day, her growth will come down to the relationship that she has with people on the staff. I consider all of my students my children, but Deshana, she's like my little girl. 
It took a really long time to gain her trust and for her to realize, okay, so she's not going anywhere. <laughs> What grade would you give Miss Toast? A uh, A plus. No. A A A A plus. Plus 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 plus. I love Miss Tony. She's my angel. Please listen. Compare. Compare me the same. Contrast me different. Sitting down with these students who half of them don't enjoy reading because they know they're not good at it. I've been there. I felt that. At 8 a.m. I was a student who had a reading and writing disability, and I had an individualized education plan. IEP all the way through my master's program. It's for students who learn differently and need supports in order to level that playing field. So that's how they're different? I remember, you know, my mom trying to get me to practice, and I just bawled my eyes out. Good catch. Nice job. Saying I'm not good at it. And I'm not going to be able to be good at it. All right, so let's get to the reading. All right. All right. So we're having Nate read. They also worked with... Work with... Nate came to our school believing that he couldn't read at all. I can't read, don't want to read, don't care about reading. The students were ready. Randomly. Randomly picked for... From? From. When I started having conversations with Ms. Hodes and said that he would sit on the floor right in front of the board and he would squint, that's when we knew that Nate had eyeglass issues. So, you know, what can we do to support getting the Family Resource Center involved so that he could get glasses? I could have seen before, and I could see the words better now. Because when we had them little small words, and now I, I, I take off my glasses, and I can't see, so I put them back on, and then it pops up, and it'll be about this big. Not woke, I see an A in their back. There you go. Everyone was saying how smart he looked with his glasses on. You saw a big boost in his confidence, but there's still a lot of room for improvement with that. Like, he still has a lot of trouble in school. He did have an F in reading, um, and that's based on quizzes that they take. He's supposed to be bringing books home from here, too. Yeah, he, yeah, he never it. does. And they have a weekly reading log. Do you know what they look like? Y'all yeah, seen it, but he never brought it home again. I thought y'all stopped doing it. Yep, Every that's month. the one he used to bring home. So March 4th, they'll take the uh, reading test, mm -hmm. and we have to make him believe in himself. Yeah, because no, with so. him, is it, does he feel like doing it, or does he not feel yeah, like doing yeah. it? So um, with that coming up, just anything you can do so to him encourage back. him is really right, important. So you know you got to stay focused. What do I tell you all the time? Always say, stay focused. Oh, you got to read every night. As soon as you come in the house, that's to be your first priority is to get the book, because you got to get your grades together. You know that, right? Because ain't nobody about to be calling you dumb or stupid or nothing. I don't, I I don't know play that. I'm, I don't, you're going to learn. I've been bored. Some kid at recess said I was zero. And even people told me I'm midget. They call him shorty. Midget! Midget. Midget! Mini me. Midget! My kid come back to the classroom kind of like kid be in that one corner where he walk up the stairs. He'd yeah. be in that one corner crying. That's just sad. I've seen conflict on the playground. Students not following directions in class. Pushing and shoving, having altercations, which is totally unacceptable and not reflective of a leader. Let me hear that anybody has said anything or put their hands on Vincent. It will be an issue. OK, give me your hand. Let me tell you this, Vincent. We are here to support you. 
you may come and talk to Mrs. Arnett and I, and I, we'll go over your feelings I about it, okay? You have strategies, you have techniques, and you know what to do Are now. Are we leaving? We're gonna go to I Promise Circles, and we're gonna learn, and we're gonna meet people, and things are gonna be loud that we can't control. My eyes are here. But your hand just trying to... My eyes are here. Let's Look at me. Literally, I got your back. Literally, Mrs. Arnett has your back, okay? <laughs> Love how you're being we had to talk about how to approach a bully because my class, they are very protective. Vincent, my girls were want to fight all the kids. I was like, no, we're not going to fight. And we just really had to talk about how we can take care of and advocate for other people, and it doesn't have to be violent. No, give it to me. No. So there was some people who was messing with Vincent. They took his flapper, and they said, sit down, dog. Our class stays together as a family, so we stand up for him. Hey, give his seat back. I know that. Makai said, can you please give him his flapper back and leave him alone? So they gave him his flapper back and left him alone. I used to bully kids, and I knew that that was bad, but I used to be with a group, and I usually do bad stuff. And at this school, I know that I don't gotta bully people. I have a group right here that doesn't fight or nothing, but they have my back down stuff. My class, when I tell you they love Vince, they love Vince. He is this charming old man in a little person's body. Even if you wanna get upset, he has you cracking up. But I think having friends is new to him. That's going to share his timeline with us. Here I was just a baby. I have my shorts off every time. Oh, I'm happy you're wearing a shirt now. <laughs> <laughs> just having his little oh, nicknames, like we call him Sir Vince a lot. For you to go from the kind of the kid that probably not many people were like, oh my goodness, Vincent, to the kid that they're like, oh my goodness, where's Vince? I hate you permanently. Do you hate us? I like you, but I hate the story. Oh, hate is a strong word, friend. Everybody who knows Vincent, what is his favorite time of year? Halloween. And what other stuff does he like? Halloween. Scary movies. Oh, scary, scary movies. movies. I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I just like it. I just like. I like it. It's a pretty unique thing for me to be connected with our kids. I'm waiting on you. <laughs> I know. Talk to me, talk to me. Tell me what's good. You know, when I was a kid, you had so many people telling you what you couldn't be. What is your favorite horror movie? Do you watch Friday the 17th? Of course, of course. We always try to look at the best way for our kids to have the inspiration in the adults that surround them. Did you watch the first one? First one? Yes. Yeah. Remember, Will she, she was messing up all the people at the camp. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, pissed off. The camp is right there. The camp is right there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's Halloween every day around here. Hey, Vinny, did you uh, never bring your report card home? I don't have the report card. And they give you a report card. Well, is it in your locker? I mean, no. there's like three but, shirts, a few pairs of pants, maybe I some mean, shoes. I, I watched Mrs. Arnett, James, everyone, the report card. Nope. They didn't give it to me. Listen, you need to be more responsible. <laughs> no? I see no. She didn't give it to me. Well, see, I don't trust you because you, you've done this in the past. I thought she forgot it, so I thought she was so different to me at the end of the day. No, she did it. What's the first thing we're going to do on Monday morning, then? What are we going to ask her? Can I please have my report card? There you go. Because uh, I'm sure you got one. I got everything. Right. I got everything. You don't have to be speaking okay. over on the well, new language. Trying. I got you, got okay. you, got you. All right, deal. Step, got you, done, deal, done, down in the hole. First thing Monday morning. On that side of town, a lot of people come up missing, a lot of people come up dead. My mom 
She's looking for houses on the north side. Right now, I'm gonna really be focused on getting out this house. The water, I came down the rain, from downstairs for like so long to Google, and I knew to go in the basement, you could cut all the pressure off in the whole house. I was just getting ready, like throwing stuff away. I was gonna go to the shelter, like we could just go to the shelter, like for real. And maybe they'd pay attention more. I don't want to be here. My kids say sometimes every other day, we'll be moving. I'm like, I'm getting here. So you know uh, I'm, I'm famous? You know how LeBron um, did that all-time fifth place score? So I congratulated him. And LeBron liked it, so he put it on his Instagram. And like 15,000 people saw that, man. Probably over 15,000, man. Congratulations, LeBron, for moving up to all time, fifth place all time scoring. Congratulations, LeBron, for moving up to all time, fifth place all time. All time scoring. What you think of that? Jealous? Huh? Jealous? Jealous? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> hey, what's up, Nate? The great? Oh, I love your hugs. How are you doing? Have a good day? Yes. yes, sir. Students and staff, we're expecting a high of 28 degrees, but we are going outside for recess today. Make sure you bundle up. I feel really good about where we are right now, where we're going. It's gonna be a while before we hit that state achievement score, but we're also measured by how much growth our students make. It's scary. We know the task that we have up against us. Don't do it. Don't do it. Let it go. I will do it too. But I am confident that we will be able to grow our kids two years or more. The kids have been working so hard, and I see that progress. So today, we wanted to surprise them with a very special guest. We're happy to have a special treat to share with you. So if you would all welcome Mr. LeBron. Here we saw LeBron James. And I was there. It was cool because I don't get to meet a lot of famous people. I was grateful. All the people around all these cities and countries and stuff, they don't get to see him. I want him to be proud of me, and I'll be proud of him. As you guys know, Mr. LeBron is in town for a game this evening, but he couldn't come into town without stopping by his most favorite, yeah. I promise, school and checking on his kids. Absolutely, absolutely. Thanksgiving is tomorrow. You got, everyone gets caught up in, in the beautiful feast and the food and everything, but more importantly, it's the, the people and the loved ones that we have. I want to know what I'm thankful for. Yes. Yes. You want to know what I'm thankful Yo, for? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm thankful. I am thankful for every last one of y'all because y'all inspire me every day to get up and be the best role model, the best leader I can be, the best father, friend, husband because of you guys. Like, I wake up every day knowing how much more responsibility I got because of you guys. Uh -huh. All 240 of you guys <laughs> all around this school. So LeBron is here. He wants to hear from you. We got to start with V. Yeah, we do. Can you share with Mr. LeBron what you do for Halloween? Oh, yeah. He was. Oh, you was? Oh, yes. I was about yeah. your picture on my phone. I was Pennywise last year. You were better than I was. You were unbelievable. Right there, man. LeBron kissed me. I didn't die, I just got knocked out. I try to make our days as normal as possible. Are those uh, tears of joy? <laughs> uh. We have that celebration. And then 
back to business as usual. Love you guys. Even though it may be exciting, our kids know they need to make sure that they have their actions in check. We'll see how much back to business as usual after LeBron. He went back into the classroom. He went with an attitude. One of the kids told him to be quiet, and he yelled back, no, you be quiet. I'm upset. I consider today a very special day. LeBron's in the building. What happened? Everyone started yelling, and I told him to be quiet. Then he got mad, and he left. He got up in the boy's face, started choking him, just caused a total disruption. And he uh, came back in, and he was like, I'll whoop everybody. And I was like, well, what me? And then he was like, I'm not scared of y'all. I was like, I'm not scared of you. And then he said, um, and then, um, and then I said, stop spitting and yelling in my face. I'm disappointed. My feelings are hurt because Nate can be such a wonderful student. But the fact that he knows, that he felt like he had a lot of power. I mean, LeBron James, of all people, responded to his Instagram post. But he also has to remember that he's in third grade and he's a student. Very rarely, very rarely do we suspend. But Nate, to be suspended, he's going to be sent home today. <laughs> do you understand where you messed up? Because you know, if when he came back in the classroom, you didn't have to respond to nothing he said. After he had left out the door and came back, you didn't have to respond, did you? Intercepted Dominique. Dominique was on the floor with the sands behind his back, and then, you know it was it was troubling because he's nine. Look at that! That again, pound out your chest. Majority of our schools, if it came up, it would have been a phone call home. He's suspended, probably three to five days. I mean, that's just boom, boom, boom. It's a, it's like a factory. You know, they call it the pipeline to prison, but it's like a factory, and that's what we're trying to get away from. So let's talk through how we went from okay, she was kicking me. All of a sudden, we were being that disrespectful to a police officer who allows you to color with him, who talks to you every day and tells you how proud he is of you. How did we get to that point? Who made the choice to get it to that point? Mm -hmm. You. There's been kids that have been suspended from the I Promise school when they take it to a, a very excessive level. Come here. But now, we want to handle that in-house so they stay in our building. Put this down. Give me a You all right? Vacation. Where'd you go on vacation? I was out here. So was it a vacation mm -hmm. or a vacation? Let's call it what it is so we will never have to do that again, right? Why do you think you were suspended? What did you actually do? I hit him back. And that's not what we want to do. I know that's a lot of times we say at home and our parents say, if somebody hits you, you hit them back. But does that help make the world better? Did that help you feel better? No, it caused you more anger on the inside. What's something that you can do on the inside that makes you happy? What do you think your happy place can be? The lake swimming? You said you love swimming? What sound does the water make when you jump in? <laughs> so when you get upset, you see how you just, you probably don't even know. I need a mirror. You just smile. So happy place. You have a happy place. You feel how happy you got? Do you know how many times you smiled just now? About 10. <laughs> just thinking about it. So do you think next time someone makes you upset or that you become upset, you can think about that? I love it. 
All right, let's get you back to class. Right here, you probably won't get to today. I learned that um, I gotta stop fighting and I gotta breathe in and breathe out and ignore a whole bunch of other people. Because probably other people are in a bad position. And they probably their parents are in jail, or they probably never got to meet them. And like, probably don't see their family like me. Teaching them the skills to learn how to manage their emotions, without that piece, they get suspended. They get expelled. To me, it's the pipeline of prison. Where's the bag for your headphones? Should be in the locker. Okay. All right, I'll see you after lunch. Okay. Nate has made huge progress. He came in today and he immediately did his morning work, did everything, he was on it, he got all his work done. It's eye-opening to see the changes in him taking place. He still gets up, walks out of the classroom, but he doesn't slam the door. So that's huge progress because at the beginning of the year, he was slamming the door several times a day. Nate. Uh, it was yesterday when I challenged myself to do all of my work and uh, get my get my sticker chart full. We did Promise Circle, and he shared that he didn't like how he always felt at his home. Yeah, and was it hard for you? But he liked school and how he related like school to being his home. Oh, oh school today, Scouter. Good. Get your Chromebook, or what are you going to do? You want something to drink? When Scout's mother, Rebecca, had her second brain surgery, Scout was three. It was very difficult. We just bond together as a family. She's talked about her mom's health. Her mother has very bad seizures at times. Every Friday, I go visit my mom, and I spend the night. She's going to come home, so I'm excited about that. It's going too fast. Okay. When she came to the I Promise School, there was like an unspoken understanding among the kids. When you go through trauma, tragedy, financial difficulties, you're young and you don't really understand it, but there's like a cloud there. That spark that's in kids at that age, or should be, it's overshadowed. So they see these kids, there's no pretense, and they just were drawn together. At my old school, I wasn't that good at reading. I used to get Fs and stuff. We were like only reading little baby books that only babies could read, and it was very easy. But at this school, we go to like Colorado Motels and books. All right, Miss Scout, you're up. I can see that, replied Robot. He gave a jump in the air. He put a strong snout into the ground behind pushing, digging, and rooting. Whoa. He felt very happy. I didn't know that I would love reading so much. Wow. Like it makes me like imagine more things, and it makes me like like think good. I mean, I guess it makes me like have more fun. In just this one semester, she's gone up five reading levels. So. She feels some relief, but I know that silently she's still wondering, am I gonna pass the test and go on to the fourth grade? Class, class. Yes, sir. I want us to make sure that our bodies are actively listening. You can tell me your color, or you can just tell me how you feel. Look how much testing that is. When you already struggle in school, then I know that a test is another way for me to fail. Vincent, I need you to respect my personal space, and I need you to control your body. Listen, Vincent. 
you know, yesterday you really hurt my feelings with some of the things you said. And I was sad because I know how much we love each other. And you said some really mean things to me yesterday. And I know that's not how you feel. Can you please tell me that's not how you feel? No. You love me? Sometimes you get on my nerves. Okay, I respect that. No, but, but even when you get on my nerves, I still love you. Do you love me when I get on your nerves? Uh, not at the time. Oh, that's honesty. All right, we're going to have a good day. Give me a hug because I love you. Bring it in, Vincent Thomas Zellman, who I love. But I definitely think from the beginning of the school year until now, I'm seeing a huge change in events. You know, our social emotional learning, we keep widening the scope of where I have to do the right thing. It's not just in the classroom, it's in life. We have been pretty effective integrating social emotional learning intentionally within the whole school. We have it at different tiers. Thanks. As one our most here. intensive tier is where the mental health supports come in. You guys, I want you to write down a list of how many words you can think of that are feeling words that you feel when you're at school the most. Happy, brave, and safe. You feel brave when you're at school? Yeah. Okay, tell me about feeling brave at school. Like, when I help other students, when people mess with people and they stand up for other people when they don't have nobody to help them. You hear yeah. that feeling? That's a, that's a really good feeling, right? Yeah. When you help somebody else, it makes you feel brave. Did you have safe too? No, because I don't feel safe here. Yep. Frustrated, scared, and upset, and emotional. Okay, tell me them again. I want to write them down too. Emotional, emotional. Okay. frustrated, scared, and upset. Yeah. Are there ever any days, Stacia, that you feel safe? Never, I said. Okay. Deshana. What's something that you can do if you're around somebody and it's not a good situation? What can you do? Um, get mad. Well, is that gonna be the, a good choice to make or a negative choice to make? I get into fights because it makes my day much better so I can get the anger out on the person so I don't gotta worry about it the next day. Deshauna is the most vulnerable, precious person but if she feels like her back's against the wall, she's gonna fight. You started it, I'm gonna keep it going. And I'm gonna keep it going because I'm not gonna walk away from an argument. I'm not gonna walk away from a fight. At the beginning of the year, we tried to be friends, but she said, no, I got a new friend. And then that's when we weren't friends anymore. We already tried that, but Chloe is a copycat. She's a follower because I was mad already, and then she wanted to act like she was mad. They want to be the center of attention all the time. Chloe, please leave it be. They have that explosive personality that I'm not going to be disrespected, and if you disrespect me, then it's boom. Hey, Chloe, hey. bitch! I'm going to kill you, dumb bitch! Stop. Stop. Chloe. Stop. I jumped her. You know what that means? Jumped. Fight. I knocked her glasses off. She choked me. She did this to me, and I was like, so, boom to her. I understand that Deshana has choke marks around her neck. Did you choke her? No, I did not put my hands on her. All I did is push her. Where'd you push her at? I pushed her on her back. On her back? Mm-hmm. OK. Chloe, you've come a very long way to know that you don't handle a situation by putting your hands on anyone, period. How did that make you feel when Chloe did that to you? Did it make you feel mad? Why did it make you feel mad? Because it ever choked me or grabbed me from my neck. Okay. Did it scare you? Yeah, because nobody ever did that to me. What do we need to do to fix this, Chloe? Do you want Deshaun to say it? Tell her. Sorry. Do you accept her apology? Hmm? Kind of. The last couple of weeks have been really, really stressful. This is it. Test.
artist. That model we've been, you know, believing in. If you love a kid 100% and give the family what they need to be strong and supportive, they can do anything. We believe in them so much, but we aren't sure how they're gonna do. Good morning, Team IPS. We are going to take our last administration of the MAP assessment. We've been working so hard since the beginning of the year with behaviors, with academics, and it's been building up to this moment. Third grade, this is the test that's going to get you into the fourth grade. I'm super nervous. I'll get like a straight up, not like high enough to pass. I need to get a high score so they can prove that I can be able to go to fourth grade. I want you to take your time. Read each question completely. We need not only to hit our goals, I want you to surpass those goals. Take a deep breath, calm down, you got this. Oh no. <laughs> It's actually boring. It's boring to me because we gotta sit in a class and be quiet for like 60 minutes. I can't listen to music. It's so boring. And annoying. I was confident I was going to get a bad store. I'm not that smart. I'm dumb. I'm like, I fail every time. Okay, students. Time is up. That day, Michelle FaceTimed me. She was like, are you sitting down? She never FaceTimed me, by the way. And I was like, oh, no. What happened to one of our kids? Please don't tell me something happened to one of our kids. She was like, our test scores just came back, and our kids just completely destroyed them. So you know I'm gonna be on a the same kids a few months ago that was like in the lower, lower, lower percentile in everything. What? Oh my God, that was like... Wait, no, this was his goal. 159. This was his super duper stretch goal. And what? What'd you get? Boom, there it is. Boom, there it is. 189. What do you think about that? That's it! You're smarter than you thought you were. That boy is a fire! I'm just going one now so you don't get that thing. When I saw Vincent, I saw hope. I saw a kid who has never been structured enough to know his potential. I remember the first time I got him to write, I think it was on the floor. Vincent, that's ridiculous! It was like pulling teeth, but at the end, he said, I did that. I've never done that before. That's amazing! I'm done. I'm done. Who did it? You did it! I tried. Good. OK, wait. So what did you get on your test? I got two oh one. Oh, Deshauna. Deshauna was at least a year and a half below grade level. She's one we've seen the most growth with, both academically and social emotionally. Oh my god, my kids are such perseverers. I love it. I gotta go be a principal. Our students are <laughs> seeing that they do have the capacity to grow, and it's just so amazing the <laughs> excitement, the happiness for them to finally see that they have it. You know, they can do it. My goal was. Uh... 176, and I got that 179, yeah. I'm so proud of you! So dope. I love it. Congratulations. Nate came in at the kindergarten yeah. level. The final test scores showed a beginning third grade level, so he saw that he made growth. Mm. Matt, 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 doing good, getting it together. Hey, 
You know, our students were at the 25th percentile and below, and here you have 91% of our kids now meeting their goal. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good day here at IPS. <laughs> okay. I feel so happy with where we are today. You know, we are really creating change here. The proof is in the pudding. I mean, look at what we're doing here. Are you dancing, dancing? <laughs> she, she, you're not giving it back to her. She's giving no. it to the you're not back to her. Like, I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Mama! Yeah! You, you're out. Congratulations. Congratulations. I freaked. I got a 207. I screamed. In the beginning of the year, I was very nervous for even existing and for going to school and then work. And then now I just feel like good, just good about myself. Look, you gotta see everybody signed it. Now we are proud of you. So proud. She's gotten a lot more confident the more progress she made. She's not intimidated with reading anymore like she used to avoid reading time. She's finding pride. When I was like younger, I was super bad at reading, but now here I am in the highest reading group. And I passed the reading test. <laughs> Today, we are here to celebrate our tremendous growth on our district map test. So this is a wonderful day of celebration. You guys are looking at me, wondering, why are we here? Drum roll, please! Can you take the suspense? It's a pretty cool thing for me everywhere I go now. All over the world, everyone wants to ask how the school is doing. And, and obviously, it's all in the test scores. That was us. Uh, <laughs> I'm not even going to sit here and lie. It was surprising to all of us. Oh, my God. The best place for me at the end of the school year when I was growing up was right in this gym where you guys are right now. It all started here. Is there anything like that you think we could do better? I know my biggest fear is them leaving this wonderful home and then releasing them to high school. I'm like, ah. At the end of the day, all we can do is control what we can control. And when it's time for them to fly, as much as it may hurt us, we have to allow them to yes. go. Nate had a real bad episode. He was just crying so hard. He said he was thinking about his dad and he shook his head. You know, he got his head. And he said, when I shook my head real hard, he said I could just vision my dad. <laughs> he was crying so far that we could not calm him down to where he was throwing up. It was the anniversary of when his father was killed. He brought in a lot from that. Here's the dates, right? And are they in order? Yeah. So what do we call that? When we Nate did make two years growth and is going to move on to fourth grade, but he's still reading below grade level. We were raised by a sick, so we, um, so mom, what? Huh? A single mom. A single mom. We need to dig deeper. Even though we had a lot of celebrations, we are not where we need to be. 
I'm giving you a piece of paper. You're going to write your song. I'm not going to. Students can either make progress in growth or achievement or both. Growth is just that year and a half or more from the beginning of the school year. Achievement is whether they're on grade level. On growth, we were in the 99th percentile, but achievement on our state report card, we got an F. The overall percentage of students who made their grade level markers was too low to warrant anything other than an F. You know, we're not there yet, but to see how far our students have grown emotionally, that was unexpected for me. Draw four, and the color is exactly. I'm so proud of all three of you. I'm going to let Miss Tozy know, too, how well you did. Two, one, that is. Oh, we both lost. I got my new haircut because I've wanted it for five years now. <laughs> Her haircut was an actual promise gift for her doing so well. So she earned that. Some people were like, punk. <laughs> yeah, some people called me a punk, and it was actually really cool. I don't know anything about my future yet. All I know is I'm happy that I get to be myself, finally. With the I promise you stepping in help. And like, we're finally about to move. Anything to make my kids happy, that made me happy. For them to see that new house thing, I'm like, wow, like, this is how it's supposed to be. This is before, can't wait till y'all see the after, so. Cause we been, I struggle for real. When they dad died, it's like, I lost myself too, like, for real. But there's something that you can't fix. And like when they called it for that school, it was just, it was like a joy. I don't know how you get picked, how you get picked. It's that right there. It's beautiful. We made it through rough times. The killing, it's a lot. I got 10 friends. I grew up with all that got murdered. We always love and miss you. I worry about if one day I'm going to get that call. If I'm the thing. So I talk to him. You know, when you graduate, you got to do right. Since our circle is so small, there's only us, can we all agree we're going to contribute? Will you share, Scout? Fine. Oh, <sighs> That's so exciting. How about you, Nate? Oh, let's go. <laughs> LeBron James came to the school and surprised the kids. He had a circle, and they got to speak to him. <laughs> it was absolutely beautiful for the kids to be exactly who they were right there with LeBron James. You got questions for me? You know I was go for you. That's exactly why I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Just thinking about our year together, well, I want to know, Nate, how have you changed from last year to this year? I have problems staying in class. Mm -hmm. Do you know why? I don't know, because my anger. When things are feeling like, you know, the wall is caving in or you feel like you can't master something or you feel like you can't accomplish something, there's always someone to the left or your right of you, especially inside these walls that you can lean on. Why did you want to build this school? Because um, I was you guys at, at some point not too long ago. I felt like it was very important for, for us to create something like this for you guys. And when you guys go outside the campus, make sure you guys set the good example that you guys learn here, because it makes a difference. Happy last day. Happy last day. That's it. 
and another bus has to come. Okay, I'm stuck. All right, come on. <laughs> Good morning. I'm not going to be here. We had an awesome school year together. I can't believe that next week I'm not going to get to be with you Monday through Friday. I can feel sad, but you should feel proud of yourself. End of the school year. There's a lot of anxiety. You know, we care about these kids so much. This is a consistent amount of love they're getting, they're coming in, they're getting those hugs every morning, they're getting their breakfast. And a lot of our kids, they're gonna leave here on Monday, they're gonna say, where's our food gonna come from? So there's some anxiety, and then I, I think about that all summer. We've made personal relationships with every single kid in this building. Gonna miss you guys. Today is officially our last circle of fourth grade. So, Here's our song for today. Are you ready? It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all. because I'm gonna make all you guys, especially Vincent, <laughs> to see positive people. It makes me grow and be a better person than I am now. How many of you think that you can 100% tell I've grown so much in one year? Vincent, sweetheart, I know that crying makes you uncomfortable, but I want you to sit in it. I want you to just feel it, and I want you to relax. It's okay to be sad. Did you know it's okay to be sad? And I want us to hold on to this feeling so that next year when we're sick of each other, we remember how much we missed each other. Ladies and gentlemen, you should have everything with you that you're taking. We're getting ready to leave, okay? Mm, I know, baby. All right, but I need my ladies in a straight line, my gentlemen in a straight line. All right, I need everyone's attention. As we get ready to leave, I want you to make good choices in the summer. I want you to promise that you'll be safe. Are you ready? This is my 19th year. This is the first year where I have not heard a student say, yay, it's the last day of school. Our kids look forward to seeing us each and every day. <sighs> We've poured so much love. Gosh. I'm gonna miss seeing their faces, getting hugs from them and I'm gonna worry about them. I was like always so stoic. These kids, they've made me a more emotional person. We're at a place where our kids need us and we need them. have a model here that's working and there are more students even in Akron <laughs> and across the country that need this the things that they're doing for the families we're learning a lot and how to change our approach we're trying to prove that public school works we have an obligation as a country to help those students that are never going to attend a private school, that are never going to attend a charter school. 
<laughs> and now we have some proof that what we're doing is really making a difference. Um, so we're gonna keep at it. He's out, he's out. Bye, B. What I hope that people get out of what we're doing here is that we're creating change. We're not just talking about it, we're actually living it. If you're not creating change while you're successful, if you're not putting other people in position to be successful, what are you here for? March 13th, that was the last day that we were together. Initially, it was going to be closed for three weeks. It's just supposed to be three weeks. You don't know what's going to change from day to day. We're worried about, you know, where am I gonna get my food? It's additional traumas. Everything is, I don't know. You don't know what happened that was new. When they all went home, I became very anxious because I know how hard some of their lives are and they don't even have school now. The challenges they're dealing with, we hear the voices of the kids. I miss school. I miss my friends. I go through a lot. I can't stand the sun anymore. We keep listening and things will get better. As a community, we'll get through it. Right. We made a promise to these kids and we're not going to forget that. <laughs> I am physically a teenager. You're 11. Don't bring that up. You don't like Corona. I don't like this. Nice word. This is PG. PG. Yeah, I know. God. No more PG now because I want my. Today we're having taco meat, taco sauce, lettuce, cheese, sour cream, and taco bread and the hard bread. I'm finna be a grown man. When? In nine years, I'm gonna be 20. Yeah, Nate, do you wanna go back to school? Yeah.